I invite you, my Christian friends, in body or in spirit, please stand and join with me in our call to worship. In the beginning was the Word. The Word became flesh and lived among us. And we have seen His glory, the glory of the Father's Son. The law indeed was given through Moses. But grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God. It is God's only Son who has made Him known. sinless. We are self-deceived and the truth is not in us. Let us therefore confess our sins before Almighty God. O most gracious God, we confess that we are children of sin. We have sinned and have fallen short of your glory. We have neglected and abused your holy name. We have unjustly with our neighbors not loving them as we love ourselves. You reveal your love to us in the birth of Jesus Christ and have offered us pardon and salvation in him. Guide us by your counsel and receive us into your glory. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. is a true statement to be universally accepted and believed Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners 
If we confess our sins, he who is faithful and just will forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. My Christian friends, we can believe this. It is the good news of the gospel. In the person of Jesus Christ, we stand justified, we stand sanctified, and our sins are forgiven. At this point in our service of worship, I do want to uh, share some words with the young people and trying to uh, uh, take what uh, is sometimes a, a very complicated and deep theological message and uh, make it something that uh, even children, children can remember and recite. And I will tell you, I admit, I'm terrible at that. Um, I'm, I'm very good at talking about uh, um, the ontological and existential depths of, of Scripture, uh, but making uh, and by saying that, I know uh, that uh, Arivia, you have no idea what I'm talking about, do you? Uh, maybe you're a pretty bright young lady. Uh, but uh, one of the things that I wanted to talk about uh, in uh, a kind of children's message is is what it uh, meaning meaning is what I want to talk about. Uh, this is uh, part of what our scripture lections are about today, uh, where uh, God speaks to us, where uh, in. Uh, uh, in the book of Hebrews, where God speaks to us by his word made flesh in the person of Jesus Christ. Has, uh, in the Old Testament, God speaks to us through his prophets. God speaks to us. God has something to say. But at the core, it's not just God speaking to us to give us information. It's God speaking to us to help us have meaning and purpose. So if I ask you, if I should ask you, um, what do words mean? You might be able to answer that question, so, you know, it's like semantics, you, what, does, what do words mean? But it's deeper than that. Asking about meaning is not just meaning of words, it's, it's meaning of life, meaning of our very existence. Why are we here? Why are we here? I don't know if that's a question that, that you ask, Arivia, but I think that occasionally people ask that question. Why are we here? You know, we Presbyterians have a very long and pronounced, and I think a very profound way of answering that question in, in what we call our catechism. Um, what is the chief end of humanity? You may know this. The answer is to glorify God and to enjoy him forever. And as true as I think that is, there is a much simpler answer to be given. There is a, um, an interesting catechism in the African Reformed Church that I like that addresses this, this type of question. When asked, why did God create us? The catechetical answer is, he just thought you might like it. Um, and I like that answer. I think that that is sometimes uh, cutting through a lot of the, uh, the Presbyterian verbiage that we have. I just want you to think about that, that uh, perhaps the simpler explanation is the one that truly gives us meaning. Why did God create us? He thought you might like it. And I, for one, do like it. Uh, so I invite you to, uh, to pray with me. Uh, uh, you can repeat the words with me as we pray. Gracious God, we give you thanks for creating us. We give you thanks for creating us anew in the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ. It is in his name that we pray. Amen.
As God is glorified by the prayer of the anthem, may God also be glorified by the proclamation of the word. Let us pray. Gracious God, again we come before you seeking the counsel of your Holy Spirit to become your own interpreter, to give spiritual life to the words that we read this day. May your written word well up in us to become your incarnate word, writing that love, that grace upon our hearts. May it go forth from us into the world just as you came into the world through your Son. Empower us by your proclamation. Speak to us this day, not with mere words, but with life. This we pray in Christ's most holy name. Amen. Our scripture lection for this morning, <clears throat> following the lectionary, comes from uh, the, well, that's, I was about to call it the letter to the Hebrews because that's what the, uh, the heading in your New Testament says. Uh, but um, it's not a letter. Uh, it's, uh, I, and I need to uh, share that with you. Uh, the, there are two letters in the New Testament, or at least so-called letters, that aren't actually letters when you look at the, the genre, the form of, uh, of the material. Uh, 1 John is not technically a letter. It's a tract. Uh, and uh, Hebrews is not a letter. Uh, it's a sermon. Um, and um, we don't know who the author is. Uh, it, uh, it takes its place at the tail end of the collection of Paul's letters because the church, and the, the church would go around saying, well, Paul must have written it because they loved it so much that they would tack it on the, uh, the back end of their collection of Paul's letters. That's why it holds the position that it does in our New Testament. But even when they would say this, they, the, uh, the theologians and the biblical scholars of the day knew perfectly well that Paul didn't write it. It never claims to be written by Paul. It is a sermon, and this is its opening. And it is an opening that is reminiscent of what we find in uh, the Gospel of John, uh, where God speaks to the world by the Word, the Word made flesh and dwelling among us in Jesus Christ. So in order to understand Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, there's another uh, lectionary reading for today, the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 1 through 14. I want to read that first. And then focus on, uh, and then read uh, Hebrews, uh, which would be the focus of our message for the day. So I invite you to listen to the opening of John's Gospel. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overtake it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light, the true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world came into being through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to what was his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of flesh, nor of the will of humanity, but of God. And the word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory as of a father's only son, full of grace and truth. Now, my Christian friends, I invite you to listen to this reading uh, from uh, Hebrews. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many, in many and various ways. 
by the prophets. But in these days, these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he had made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Amen, and may God give us to understand this reading or these readings of his holy word. This is the word of the Lord. My Christian friends, long ago God spoke. Long ago God spoke. He spoke to our ancestors through creation. He spoke to our ancestors through prophets. A creation which came, in, uh, came to be through his son. A creation that testifies to our relationship. Both Old and New Testaments testify to this. God spoke to our ancestors by the prophets, by relationships, by events. That's why we have an Old Testament. That's why we read the stories in the New Testament. These ancient stories are one of the ways God speaks to us. He spoke to us through our ancestors. He spoke to us through Scripture. The Word of God which we call scripture, the word of God, God's self-revelation, God's self-disclosure. Long ago, my Christian friends, God spoke. And I say to you, my Christian friends, God speaks to us today. He speaks to us still through creation, a creation which came to, into being through his son. Because it, uh, it, in both Hebrews and in the Gospel of John, all that exists comes into being because God spoke it into being. We see that reflected in Genesis. God speaks. And, and so powerful is God's word, so potent is the word of God, that there is no pushback. Creation has no choice but to come into existence when God speaks. Let there be light. Does light debate? Is there any struggle? No. There was light. That's the beauty of the creation story. And, 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 you, and, and by the way, we take it for granted that uh, this is, uh, now I'm going to give you a little bit of history. Uh, the, the creation story that you have in Genesis is, is phenomenal. When you compare it to all the other creation accounts of the ancient world and what they were saying. Because in, in the ancient world, Creation only comes into existence by the, uh, the conflicting powers of various deities and uh, demigods and how they, uh, they have to battle one another in order to reign supreme, in order to produce creation. Not so in Genesis. The God of the ancient Hebrews, the God of the Old Testament, is one who simply utters the word. And so powerful is his word. Creation must be. It comes into being. God uttered our names, and we came into being. Before we were formed in the womb, God knew us. God spoke our names. We exist by the grace of that word that God spoke. Creation is the mean, one, of the, one of many means by which we see God speaking to us this day. But surely the weightier uh, freight, if you will, of, uh, of God's speaking is through his son. That's the claim we make as Christians. He speaks to us today by his son, by our relationship with his son, by the events of his son. We read about the mighty acts of God in the person of Jesus Christ throughout the Gospels. 
This is Jesus Christ, the Word of God, God's self-disclosure, God's self-revelation. We talk about Scripture as being the Word of God, but it is Jesus Christ who is the Word of God. It's Jesus Christ who himself breathes life by the Spirit into the pages of the Old Testament. Today, God still speaks. This is an important thing for us to realize on Christmas Day, my Christian friends. And that is that we go through the busyness of our lives and we, and, and we don't often listen for God speaking to us. We sometimes try to, to carve out an existence for ourselves, trying to find meaning and purpose in all of the things that we do, wondering if, in fact, the things that we do actually matter. What's the, what's the meaning of it all? What's the purpose of it all? The beauty of science is that it can explain to us how the universe is, but it can never tell us why the universe goes through all the trouble of even existing. And I will tell you, as simple as the answer might be, the universe goes through all the trouble of existing because of love. You go through all the trouble of existing because God loves you. Why do we exist? As Presbyterians, we have added our historical words to the interpretation of God's word in Scripture. We exist to glorify God and to enjoy Him forever. I think that's a great answer. But as I said in the children's message, I think an even more profound answer comes from uh, the, the African Catechism. God created us because He thought we might like it. Sometimes that's the simplest answer to meaning. Recognizing that we are here to enjoy God's creation. We are here to enjoy God's presence. We are here to enjoy one another. That's meaning. That's love. That's compassion. That's the word that God speaks to us in the person of Jesus Christ. God so loved the world that he gave us his son. He sent his word to take on flesh. Human vesture emptying himself of his godhood to come continue to speak to us today. When we walk through life wondering what it's all about, nothing wrong, by the way, with these contemplations. There are moments that I have to step aside and wonder whether the things I do matter, whether the, things, the, the person that I am matters. We all have these moments. I want to assure you that when those moments occur, it's okay to wrestle with them. But know this unique message in it all. You exist because God loves you. You exist for the love of God. And that is a wonderful reason to be. God speaks, my Christian friends. He spoke to our ancestors of old. He speaks to us today. Long ago, God spoke in a lowly manger. God spoke, and he still speaks. Jesus Christ is born today. Listen for the word of God. Amen, and may God bless this witness to the glory of his name.
God has called us to faith in the proclamation of the word, let us now reaffirm that faith by using the Apostles' Creed. Let us reaffirm our faith together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. can rise up to, to offer you a proclamation that is worthy of your name, worthy of the love that you've shown us in your Son, Jesus Christ. Yet we pray nonetheless, because we are in fellowship with you by the gift of your Son. We speak to you in the way we would speak to anyone whom we love. Hear our prayers of love. We beseech you to continue to love us and make that love known through your Son. We are grateful for the new creation we have in his birth. We are grateful for the new life we have through all that you have made known that is good and kind and merciful. We pray that as we face the new challenges, the new meanings of life through your Son, that we may go forth as your disciples, following that love, following that compassion, living by the injunctions that you have made known through the life, the death, the resurrection, the teachings of your Son. Hear this, our prayer. We pray in Christ's most holy name. He who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this point in our service of worship, we prepare ourselves for what it means to gather for worship, and that is to give of ourselves for the service to the world, service in love, just as God has given of himself in love for this world. We do that often through the tokens that we offer for the furtherance of the mission of the church, for the mission of Jesus Christ. And as we reflect on that this day in our giving, May we also find ourselves renewed and refreshed by the gift that God has given to us in his sacrifice. Let us continue our worship with our tithes and offerings.
Christ is beyond measure, giving your life for us. There is nothing we can give in return that is worthy. Yet, we understand the need to give of ourselves. Receive, we pray, these tokens as our very lives committed to you in love and in service. This we pray in Christ's name. Amen. most of you have noticed that I'm really not firing on full thrusters today. My voice, uh, yeah, it, it's true. true. <laughs> um, my voice is very raspy and uh, I am under the weather. Uh, so uh, again, as much as I hate to finish off 2022, not going back to shake hands with everyone, I love you dearly. Um, please understand that I'm not going to go in the back to shake hands. Um, this is probably for your benefit as well. Uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, Joyce, uh, very lovingly, but uh, also very notably, has been avoiding me uh, because she knows I'm under the weather, and I don't. And I don't blame her. I don't blame. I don't blame anyone. I don't want anyone to get sick because of me. Um, and so, uh, that being the case, I want to offer to you um, this um, this reminder: we will gather here in this sanctuary once again the next time in 2023. May it be a great year for us. May it be a great year for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so I charge you, my Christian friends, to go in peace, live as free people, serve the Lord rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. <laughs>